Hello, welcome to this MEI M1 video on forces. Let's take a look at what we need to know for the specification first. We need to understand the different language that might be used in the question relating to forces and be able to identify the forces acting on a system and represent them on a force diagram. That's often the first part of a question and it's absolutely crucial to get that correct because obviously if you miss off a force or get one incorrect, the rest of the calculations that follow are going to have errors. We need to be able to resolve a force into components and identify suitable directions for resolving. And resolving a force into components is just the same as resolving a vector into components, like we did in an earlier video. You need to be able to find the resultant of several forces by vector addition. And know that a system is in equilibrium under a set of forces if their resultant is zero. And in fact, all the questions we're going to look at here are situations where an object is in equilibrium. We need to know that the vectors representing forces in equilibrium would form a closed polygon if we were to draw a diagram of them. And crucially, we need to be able to formulate and solve equations uh, by resolving forces in suitable directions. And that's going to be the focus of the exam questions we're going to look at today. So the sorts of forces we might get asked to consider would be things like weight, tension in a string, um, maybe the thrust in a rod uh, between two objects, the normal reaction between an object and a surface, and perhaps a frictional force. So for example, if we had an object on a rough plane, rough indicating that there's friction, and it's on equilibri in equilibrium and on the point of moving down the slope. So we could draw a diagram showing the forces. The first force I always draw is the normal reaction that acts at right angles to the slope or the surface that the object is on. Weight would act vertically downwards. Now weight can be calculated by using the equation F equals MA. So we have weight is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by its acceleration, which in this case would be acceleration due to gravity. So we need to remember that weight is equal to MG. Then for an object that's about to move down a plane, the thing holding it back and holding it in equilibrium would be the friction. Just a quick word about angles. Let's say this angle here at the bottom was something like 30 degrees. By looking at this right angle triangle here, we could work out that the angle at the top there would be 60 degrees. And so this angle if I drew um, a line perpendicular to the slope, this angle here would also be 30 because we have a right angle there. So it's worth remembering that the angle at the bottom of the slope is equal to the angle between the vertical line and the perpendicular to the slope. And that's really helpful when you're resolving the weight into two components. Now when we resolve a force into two components, it's the same as resolving a vector into its two components. You need to choose two perpendicular directions to resolve the force into. And if the object's on a horizontal plane, that would tend to be horizontally and vertically. If an object's on an inclined plane, like the diagram we've just looked at, you would tend to resolve parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the plane. To find the resultant of a system of forces is the same method we used earlier to find the resultant of a system of vectors. And if you were to draw the forces on a diagram like I've done here, they would form a closed polygon. So if we had three forces, F1, F2 and F3, if we found the resultant of those forces, um, and it was zero, that would mean the object was in equilibrium. And the diagram would be a closed polygon. Three sides in this case, but obviously there could be any number of forces. So let's have a look at some examination questions. Um, this is the full question, so you may want to pause the video and read it through at this point. So we've got a block of mass 15 kilograms on the plane 
you can draw a separate diagram or you can label the diagram that you're given. So if it's mass 15, the weight would be mg. So I'll just leave that as 15g. Now remember, this angle here will be the same as the angle at the bottom. So that's 20 degrees. We'd have a normal reaction acting vertically upwards. And then the block is being held in equilibrium by a horizontal force of magnitude P. So part one asks us to show all the forces acting on the block. I think that's all of them there. And for part two, we have to calculate P. Now in this case, I'm going to resolve parallel to the plane. So up the plane, let's see what we've got. Well, if I draw in a dotted line up there, we know that this angle here would also be 20. It's the same as the angle at the bottom, they're corresponding angles. So the component of P up the plane would be P cos 20. And then the component of the weight which would act down the plane would be 15 g sine 20, turning away from the angle. And because that is acting down the plane in the opposite direction, we would write that as being negative. So we have p cos 20 up the plane, 15 g sine 20 down the plane, and we know that that's equal to zero because it's in equilibrium. We don't have a component of R because R is acting perpendicular to the direction in which we're resolving. So if I rearrange this equation, we'll have P cos 20 equals 15G sine 20. And so P would be 15G sine 20 divided by cos 20. And typing that into the calculator gives us 53.5 newtons. So the marks here, um, for getting any one of the forces correct on the diagram, you got one mark, and for getting them all correct, you got the second. Correctly resolving um, at least one of the forces got you an M1, and for getting the whole equation correct got you an accuracy mark, and then rearranging to get the correct answer gave the third mark for that question. Okay, let's move on to an object on a horizontal surface. Um, again, that's the full question, so take a moment to read it through. And let's have a look at part one of the question. So I'm going to start by labeling the diagram. We have um, a weight of 2.5 G. Uh, we have a normal reaction, R. We have a tension of 20, which has already been drawn, acting at 15 degrees. And there would also be a tension in this second string here, um, acting down towards the ground. So we have to find the horizontal component of the force exerted on the box here at C. Horizontal component, so we're resolving, uh, we're turning through the 15, so it's 20 cos 15. And if we work that out, that's 19.3 newtons. That was just one mark. Um, it's a B mark. You needed to get that one correct. Let's have a look at parts 2, 3 and 4 then. So we're going to calculate tension in the string AB. If we look back at the diagram, I've, I've labelled that T. And I'm going to resolve horizontally in order to work that out. Now we already know the component of this one to the right is 20 cos 15 and the component of this force to the left will be T sine 50. So if I resolve to the right, we would have 20 cos 15 minus T sine 50, because it's acting the opposite way, is equal to zero because it's in equilibrium. And if I rearrange that all in one go, we'll have T equal to 20 cos 15 divided by sine of 50. And that gives us 25.2 newtons, 25.2.
Now it's a good idea to save that value in your calculator in the memory um, in case you need it later in the question, which I think we do in this case. So that's part two. Part three, calculate the normal reaction of the table on the box. Now it's really, really easy to make a mistake here and say that R is equal to 2.5G. Not only is that incorrect, but it's definitely not worth four marks. We need to look at the components of this 20 Newton force and the component of T. So 20 has got a component upwards and T has got a component downwards. So we would have R and then 20 sine 15 upwards and we'd have T cos 50 and 2.5G downwards. So if I resolve upwards, my forces would be R plus 20 sine 15 upwards. And then we have T cos 50 acting downwards and the weight acting downwards. And that would equal zero because it's in equilibrium. So rearranging this, R would be 2.5G plus T cos 50 minus 20 sine 15. Now if you've saved that value of T, that's helpful for substituting it in here, making sure you get an accurate answer. And if you type all of that in, we get an answer of 35.5 newtons. Let's have a look at part four. So the string at C is going to be replaced by one at 15 degrees below the horizontal, and we have to explain why our value of T won't change. Well, if you remember in part two, we resolved horizontally, and we had 20 cos 15 to the right, T sine 50 to the left. Now, if this string had been at 20 degree, uh, sorry, 15 degrees below the horizontal, the component to the right would be unchanged. It would still be 20 cos 15. And so we'd get the same equation that we got when we did part two. So all we need to, oops, all we need to say here is that the horizontal component of the 20 Newton force to the right is unchanged. So the tension in AB is also unchanged. Okay, so let's have a look at the marks for those three parts of the question. So in part two, we got a method mark here for forming the equation, resolving. And um, a follow through mark here, bearing in mind that you're following through your value um, of the component to the right for 25.2 or whatever follow through from your answer. Here we've got an M1 mark for forming an equation um, using resolving forces. Um, you were allowed to miss one of the forces to get the method mark. There was also a B mark here for getting the weight correct. There was an accuracy mark for getting the correct equation. You were allowed a, a little slip with the signs, positive and negatives, but otherwise it had to be correct. And then um, a final accuracy mark for the final answer. And then part four is explaining. Um, so that's just one mark there for explaining that. Okay, let's have a look at just one more question. Again, that's the question in full, if you'd like to read it through. And then let's have a look at part one. So we've got a sack of weight 250. Notice that that's the weight, not the mass, so we don't multiply by G. And we'd have a tension in the string, which would run all the way through the string over the smooth pulley. And we'd have the same tension here acting at the wall. Now we look at this sack to start off with, it's in equilibrium so we know that T minus 250 would equal zero, so T would be 250 newtons. That means that when we look at the forces acting here, horizontally our component 
would be t sine 70 so that would be 250 sine 70 and that works out to be 235 newtons to three significant figures and vertically we would have t cos 70 again that's 250 cos 70 into 3SF that works out to be 85.5 newtons so here we got a method mark for resolving at least one of these two and an accuracy mark for getting each of the answers let's have a look at the final part so the B end of the rope is now detached from the wall and instead it's attached to the top of the sack so the tension will now change because we've changed the situation but we've got now two ends of the string um, acting upwards and we'd have the weight vertically downwards so T plus T minus 250 gives us zero because it's still in equilibrium rearranging 2t is equal to 250 so the tension is now 125 and that's just one mark for getting that correct so i hope you enjoyed looking at those uh, forces questions and i look forward to seeing you on some of the other videos for this mei m1 unit